Welcome to an episode of my Linux driver tutorials. So when I have restarted this series, I got a lot of comments under my videos asking me, hey Johannes, why don't you use proper Linux kernel log levels? And I have to admit, yes, that's a good question. And when I'm redoing the series, maybe it makes sense to introduce you to Linux kernel log levels quite early as they are quite basic and they also make your driver more readable or easy, yes, and a little bit better structured. So I think it's worth interrupting the topic of character devices and talk about kernel log levels so I can use them in later videos. And another thing I try to do better in this redo of my Linux driver tutorial series is this time I try to compile to the Linux kernel coding style guidelines because last time I didn't or at least at the start I didn't. And if you want to check if your source code complies to the Linux kernel coding style guidelines, what you need is you need to download the Linux kernel sources and in the Linux kernel sources I have version 6.12.9 here available. Under scripts you can find a script called checkpatch.pl. So this script can be used to check if a patch or source files complies to the Linux kernel coding style guidelines. And I think it's worth to make a video about the Linux kernel coding style guidelines in a separate video, but let's try the script on one of my kernel modules. So with minus F, I'm telling the Perl script, okay, please check a source file and not a patch. And I want to check my better hello world Linux kernel module. And this will take a little bit of time, but now you can see the output. So the good news is I don't have any errors, but I have three warnings. The free warning is related to a missing SPDX license identifier, but the other two warnings are related to printk. And here, the script is telling me I should include kernel level facility levels. So they're also telling me, please use proper kernel log levels. But what kernel log levels are available? And for what can we use them? Okay, let's first talk about which levels are available and how to use them. And then I will tell you why you should use them. So here, we are on the documentation of the Linux kernel and we can see here a page about message logging with printk. So printk is typically used like this. We are calling printk. The first thing we put here is the log level, in this case kern info. Then we are specifying the message we want to print out and at the end we can have optional arguments. And what I have done so far is I've skipped the log level and just started with the string which should be printed out. Okay, so which log levels are available? So kernel emergency is the most urgent one. And basically this macro is resolved as a zero string here, or a string with the number zero. And seven is the yeah lowest prior um, log level. And here, for example, this is kernel debug, and this is assigned to this string number seven. And what you can do is you can use printk and then specify the log level, but there are also alias functions available, which you can see here on the right side. Okay, but why should you use kernel log levels? Well, first, if you're using these log levels or these macros, if you're seeing a print in your source code, you know exactly what it should tell you. So if it's a warning, if it's an error, or if it's just an information or debug information. The next cool thing about kernel log levels is you can set the logging level um, of the kernel's log. So for example, if you want to get a lot of debug information because you're developing a driver, it makes sense to set the log level to seven to see all kernel debug messages. But if you're on a normal running system, maybe you don't want to see all these debug messages, then you can set the log level, for example, to six or even to five, and then you wouldn't see the kernel deb or log or log messages, which are for debug purposes, for example. And the last thing is, if you're running a system, you can also filter or searching or waiting for um, prints to the kernel slot with a specific 
log level and if you have an alert for example maybe you can react to it in a script which is also quite useful. Okay so that's why you should use um, logging levels or log levels in your driver. So now let me show you a hello world kernel module in which we're using different log levels. Okay, so therefore I will navigate into my Linux driver tutorial source folder and let me copy the better hello world kernel module and create a new folder I will call log level. Yeah, I forgot a space here. Okay, then let me jump into this directory and let's see what's in here. So we have three files. The first one is the C source file for our Linux driver. Then we have a make file to build it and we have a readme which will give you some more information about the module. I will rename hello.c to loglevel.c and of course I have to change this in the make file as well. Okay, and now let's open it up. So now here we have a print k without any log level. So let's add a log level and I want to start with kernel info. So maybe let's print out here. This is an info. Okay, maybe let's try some more urgent log levels, for example, a warning. And maybe let's do make it even more critical. So let's do an alert here. And maybe let's even print out a debug message. Um, and of course you can still print out variables as you're used to it. Okay. And here in the exit function, maybe let's use the PR macros. And if, if I type here, this should be warning. Okay, so maybe let's do an emergency. Module is unloaded. Um, let's do a, an error again. And that should be it. Okay, so let me try to compile this kernel module. Ah, uh, oh, okay, I have a typo here. Sorry for that. Alert, I have a T too much here. Okay, now it should work. Yep, it's looking good. And now let's fire up Tmox and let's spawn a second window. And let's follow the kernel's log again. And with this capital T, I'm formatting the kernel timestamps into a real date. Okay, so that's done. Now let me insert my log level kernel object here. And we can see we have various um, yeah, kernel messages and they are formatted in a different way. I, this is an information. Okay, I have, it seems I have mistyped something here. Yeah. And you can see also the variables print out correctly and the various levels are formatted in a different way. So if I remove the kernel module again, you can see the alias functions are also working. And the last thing I want to show you is, so let me shut this down. If you are using the minus lowercase l flag, you can specify a log level you're interested in and only print out um, log, uh, or logging messages corresponding to this log level, so seven in this case. So here you get all the debug information. Or with one, you get all the alerts and so on and so forth. 
Okay, that's how to use log levels in a Linux kernel module. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buy me a coffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.